Welcome to Grand Rounds in Urology, GRU, Your Edge Learning Center. I'm Diane Newman, urology nurse practitioner and pelvic floor specialist. I'm also the senior editorial director of Grand Rounds in Urology. I'm excited today because I have a colleague of mine, um, urologist, Dr. Jill peters gee uh, who's gonna to talk to us about a really important topic, interstitial cystitis. Welcome, Jill. Thank you, Diane, for inviting me to join you today. Today, I'll be giving a brief overview of interstitial cystitis and bladder phenotyping, as well as a treatment framework to help guide patient care. So just what is IC or bladder pain syndrome? The American Urologic Association defines IC and bladder pain syndrome as an unpleasant sensation. It's often described as pain, pressure, or uh, discomfort, and it's oftentimes associated with other lower urinary tract symptoms, such as urgency or frequency. Symptoms have been present for at least six weeks, and there's no history of um, infection or any other identifiable cause of symptoms. It's really a diagnosis of exclusion that affects millions of men and women in the United States. The problem with treating interstitial cystitis and bladder pain syndrome is that it is a large heterogeneous group of people. They, the patients have a variety of symptoms, and there's varied response to treatment. What works for one individual may do nothing for the next individual. This has led to somewhat of a trial and error approach to treating IC, and that can be very frustrating for both the patients and the healthcare providers. To help us solve this problem, what we can do is phenotype. This allows us to take that large group of patients and break it down into three different sources or potential sources of symptoms. We have the bladder and the urethra. We have symptoms that may be coming from outside the bladder. And then we have symptoms that are coming from the brain and central nervous system. The AUA has um, broken this down into four phenotypes, and there's multiple different ways that you can break down this large group. So the AUA guidelines talk about four phenotypes. The first are patients that clearly have Hunter's ulcers or lesions. That is what we call ulcerative interstitial cystitis. All of the other patients that are felt to have symptoms coming from the bladder are called bladder-centric phenotype. If you have symptoms coming from outside of the bladder, that group is called the muscle or myofascial phenotype. And then we have the brain or central sensitization phenotype. Now, as I mentioned, there's lots of different ways to break down this group. Based on current research and my own clinical experience, I've broken this down into seven phenotypes, as shown here in green. The first phenotype would be the ulcerative interstitial cystitis, where you can see the, the Hunter's lesions or the Hunter's ulcers by cystoscopy. Dr. Hunter actually defined this phenotype back in 1918. The next group would be the urethral phenotype, where patients have symptoms focused primarily on the urethra. We have the infection phenotype, which would be bladder-centric symptoms, but a well-documented history of recurrent urinary tract infections. Then all of the other bladder-centric patients would be called the bladder phenotype. Now, there's two phenotypes that come from outside the bladder. The first would be the muscle or the myofascial phenotype, and this would include people like that have pelvic floor dysfunction, as well as muscle tenderness. The second group would be the neuralgia phenotype, which is typically pudendal neuralgia. And here, nerve pain is really the key feature. And lastly, we have the brain or central sensitization phenotype. This is where symptoms are amplified by changes in the central nervous system, and it's often associated with other chronic overlapping pain conditions. This would be things like irritable bowel syndrome, fibromyalgia, vulvodynia, and even TMJ. Phenotyping has been instrumental in guiding much more focused research, and it allows us to target really what is felt to be the root cause of symptoms. In 2024, I uh, published I See Journey to Wellness. This was written both for patients and healthcare providers alike. The book provides a framework, a roadmap for helping to identify phenotypes. Patients can hear what the clues are, and then they will identify with a phenotype that seems to fit their history and their symptoms. It brings readers really up to date on current research, especially when it comes to phenotypes, and there's references for all of the um, important studies. It also highlights associated conditions that can mimic IC symptoms, 
and it outlines special populations like men and children that really have unique challenges that they have to address. Treatment options are discussed from traditional to alternative therapies, and there's a framework provided to help develop personalized treatment plans. At the end, there's um, a toolbox uh, filled with useful tools and resources, both for patients and for healthcare providers. So many patients have associated conditions that can mimic and sometimes even make IC and bladder pain syndrome symptoms worse. These include things like endometriosis, vulvodynia, recurrent urinary tract infections, genital urinary syndrome of menopause, and voiding dysfunctions such as obstruction, incontinence, overactive bladder. You need to recognize and treat all of these conditions in order to get optimal symptom relief improvement. So treatment typically begins with behavioral strategies, which are really beneficial for all patients. This includes things like diet modification, physiological quieting techniques, hydration, and proper toileting habits. Next, we treat the specific phenotype or phenotypes that have been identified. It's important to realize that many individuals will have more than one phenotype. Next, you have to assess and treat the associated conditions in order to get optimal relief of symptoms. And then finally, it's important to reassess periodically, check the therapy, and modify the treatment plan based on the response. For additional resources, patients and providers can visit my website, which is www.icjourneytowellness.com. I facilitate a free online uh, support group. This is applicable to patients and healthcare providers. Each month, the, the group determines what topic they want to cover the next month. So this past month, we, for example, just covered all kinds of therapies. There's free journal pages, which can provide a way for patients to kind of gather all of their information in one place. There's food journals, bladder diaries that can sometimes help identify if there's certain triggers that might be causing flares. My book is available through all major retailers. But on the website, there are a couple of links. There's a link that directly goes to Amazon. The book is available in paperback, hardback, Kindle edition, as well as an audiobook. There's a separate link that takes you to Ingram Spark, which is an independent publisher. And that link provides a 25% off color version of the paperback and the uh, hardback. If anyone has questions regarding what we've talked about today, I'm happy to take emails. My email is drpetersgee at icjourneytowellness.com. And for Diane, if uh, you have any other professional education inquiries, you can go to grandroundsinurology.com for more information. So thank you. And I'm um, open for questions, Diane. Thank you so much. That was so informative. And I have to tell you, I have read your book. It's excellent. I really like how you go over the phenotyping. You know, what do you think about that? Is you think that's becoming more and more understood and handled within the urology community of, the, of who's ever seeing these types of patients? Yeah, phenotyping, I think, has really come to the forefront. It's been described, like I said, back in 1918, the first phenotype was uh, from Dr. Hunter, who described ulcerative interstitial cystitis. In 2015, uh, we have, they described five different phenotypes. Dr. Christopher Payne did that. And then in 2022, Dr. Curtis Nickel, he described nine phenotypes. So this is uh, becoming more common to, to see in the literature. The MAP network did a lot of research, primarily focused on trying to figure out how to divide up this group. And now what we are finding is in research, there's key things that you can find. For example, if you have an infection phenotype, they have shown that there's some evidence of upregulation of the C fibers. So now that we know that specifically for that phenotype, it can help us with therapy. So that's where phenotyping is really coming in, you know, being found to be more and more useful. It can help us guide therapy. Do you find that in the urology community that we're seeing more interest in this problem in women? Or is it kind of you know, I always, you know, I, when I see these women, it's always after seeing several, 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 I hate to say it, urologists even, uh, they keep searching for care and they just don't seem to get to the right individual who understands their conditions and really is a good historian as far as finding out exactly what those symptoms relate to. Yeah. 
I, I think part of the problem is has been that providers just didn't know what to do. They they kind of they maybe had one or two things that they have tried in the past, for example, you know, uh, a, a bladder installation or an antihistamine. But then after that, they just didn't know what else to do. The purpose of this book is really to bring those providers up to speed on what the current research shows. And once you have many more things and you have a better understanding, then you can be more effective in your treat treatment. And you're more willing to treat the patients because you know what to do. It's very frustrating when you just don't know what the right answer is. And so I think a better understanding will help most providers be more willing to see these patients, which is part of the reason I wrote the book, to help the patients, but also to help providers to be able to care for this group better. Well, you know, you are right. Your book really does. It's really great for healthcare providers. I mean, you know, I've been treating uh, men and women with, with IC for many years, but I really found a lot of interesting kind of tips you gave as far as treatments and that maybe to implement. I know I just really found it really informative. So I really appreciate you adding that to our literature, but also for patients, you know, I hope they do get to your website and I'm sure you may get some questions, Jill, you know, so yep. that's really nice that you're so involved with this population. Thanks so much. Thank you very much for having me again, Diane.